This is the Den of Muses. It's the home of the Kudavu. It is named after the Muses because the Muses guide us in our efforts to be creative and, and have fun. You know, dance, music, poetry. Uh, I don't know all of them, but they know me. We honor the Muses by calling the home here the Den of Muses. And uh, this is where we construct a majority of our floats. This is the float of the crew of underwear. Part of Mardi Gras seems to be uh, where you can find the uh, outer limits of satire and bad taste. And um, it's a real challenge sometimes. Uh, I'm Scott Adams. I'm the co-captain of the crew of underwear. Uh, our theme this year is going to be uh, Austin Space, uh, Texas Aliens Invade the White House. And, uh, uh, the overall concept of the, uh, uh, the, the float is going to be a uh, White House and uh, um, a giant uh, uh, Stetson hat crashing into it. So. When we uh, started our crew, we had to come up with a name, and you know, there's a lot of really great names. Uh, we always thought the uh, crew of Space Age Love had just a great name. So we had to come up with our own name, and we, uh, after a lot of deliberation, we decided to in keeping with the tradition of naming one's uh, Mardi Gras crew, uh, that's in general, after a uh, deity, we decided to invoke uh, the deity Pan, uh, because uh, one, all the major deities were already taken, and two, we are just a little sub-crew, so a minor deity was very appropriate. And, and to top it off, Pan is the god of mischief, and so we thought that, that was something to celebrate. So this is our, my, well, it's my first hand at doing paper mache, and, uh, Accidentally, it came out pretty good. My creation. <laughs> Alien termite. I spent hours on this. Fourth grade art class finally pays off. What can I it's, say? It's a mini float. We're on, since we prayed in the French Quarter, we're not allowed to have tractors and big floats. And so it's a mini float. It's pulled by a single mule. And there's only room for one or two riders on board. Uh, our th theme is save the termites or some variation thereof. So we uh, decided to put a, um, a house that is uh, being tented for fumigation on the back with uh, termites running around all over the place. Uh, an old oak tree on the front of the float, uh, paper mache, so that was a lot of fun building that. And um, once again, termites all over the place and decided to kind of take a little artistic license and put a uh, termite nest up on top of it. It can be fun. It really can be, and particularly when you open yourself up to all those possibilities in terms of self-expression or just you know, being out there. I mean, I have, we have people who are normally shy, retiring you know, individuals who normally don't say much, but when they hit the streets in the crew, it's like they just, yahoo, you know? It, it allows them to get out of themselves. And so, the, you know, Carnival is just a big release. And then we pay for it the next day, of course, and it's preceding a very religious holiday where you know, we become very pious and so forth. But I don't think you can have piety or religion without some uh, understanding and knowledge that you know there's a lot of stuff inside of us that's not always so religious. And this is a way to letting it out. This year, uh, the theme is 2001, A Space Fallacy and the crew to Jews, the first uh, New Orleans Mardi Gras crew to be Jewish, and our theme is that it's not for Catholics anymore. The crew to Jews are going to be uh, Cohen heads, and we have a, a, a ship, that's our float, called the Enterprise, and it's a Jewish starship. All the other crews have brass bands, but we have a klezmer band, I mean, we're a Jewish crew. Mm -hmm. It's going to be incredible, it really rocks. Sometimes we have a rabbi playing with us, it, it, it really is, um, you know, it's like a Jewish wedding, but we're going to be rolling down the street through the French Quarter. Mardi Gras, of course, goes back a long, long way. And there, there are various traditions within Carnival. One of those, of course, is the masking, so that uh, theoretically nobody really knows who you are. 
And of course, if you're going to be as satirical and outrageous as we are, it's a very good thing to uh, hide your identity. Our king this year is Ernie Cato, uh, R&B legend and emperor of the universe, which of course makes it perfect for us with our 2001 A Space Fallacy parade theme this year. The king gets to ride in the royal float at the front of the parade, and um, some crews, they choose their king from inside their group. Others, they bring out-of-town celebrities in. We like to focus on New Orleans people who've done something to add to the culture of the city and hopefully make a few people laugh along the way and just kind of have that funky crew de vue kind of spirit. So Ernie with his all-time classic hit Mother-in-Law is a perfect example of that. And we also figured once you're Emperor of the Universe, what's your only upward possible move? Well, it's King of Crew de vue, so it was a natural. We celebrate the old ways of celebrating Carnival. If you look at pictures of Carnival 100 years ago, you would see the coup de vue. You know, small floats, mule drawn, and, and people in the streets, and people watching the people in the streets, making fools of themselves. And there's a certain uh, synergy between the participants in the parade and the spectators. This parade would not happen without people watching it. And you can connect the people along the route, and that's what's so special about it. And there's a certain magic in that.